This past Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, MTG cosplayer and friend of the channel, friend of mine, Christine Sprankel, said that she was done with Magic the Gathering cosplay, that she was leaving due to harassment and attacks, and she also said that one of the biggest sources of pain has been the harassment from fellow MTG YouTuber, Unsleeved Media, formerly known as MTG Headquarters, also just known as Jeremy. In my four plus years as a content creator, as an MTG YouTuber, I have never so much as made a single attack video, not a single attack tweet, not one negative or aggressive word posted to Facebook that was aimed at an individual. I go after companies, not people. I go after the products those companies make, not the people who make them. And I'm not going to start now because as angry and saddened as I am about what has happened to Christine, I have never subscribed to the philosophy of fighting fire with fire. And Jeremy has just made a video saying that he is on the receiving end of extreme attacks and harassment, death threats. And I believe him because I've received death threats as well over the years, usually after he makes a video about me. But nonetheless, if you feel that the attacks and harassment on Sprankle was wrong, which they were, then you must apply that to everyone. No one, not even someone that you consider to be as toxic and hate-filled as Jeremy, deserves to have that done to them. Do not send death threats to Jeremy. Do not send incredibly hateful messages spamming him and, and, and trying to do horrible things to him mentally and emotionally. They do affect us, even someone like him. You can hear it in his tone of voice in that video as much as he begins trying to laugh it off. I know I've received them. I know what it does. Do not be that person. The only thing I have ever asked from Jeremy, Jeremy, the only thing I've ever asked from you is to be left alone and I know that's all Christine wanted from you, all many of your targets want from you, and I know that's not something you're willing to do because you subscribe to the philosophy of it's just a joke and criticism's fair, and which it is, by the way, I'm a critic. My whole career now is off of being a critic, so that's fair. But I'll ask this of you, which is to consider the following. Jeremy, you are one of the largest MTG YouTube channels. You previously were the largest MTG YouTube channel, and as numbers shift and change, you may one day be again. You have over 140,000 subscribers, tens of thousands of followers on Twitter, people who love and support you and believe what it is that you say. And all I ask is that you acknowledge that everything not publicly, just to yourself, by the way, just say to yourself, when you send out attacks at other people, surely your followers, your subscribers are going to react in kind. And that what you're on the receiving end of, as you, you say right now, that that's something you send at other people when you do what it is that you do. Christine received more than just a video from you criticizing her because the nature of your criticism was incredibly emotional and hostile and mocking and and this encouraged and emboldened people to go after her you did more than one video against her there's at least two that i know of and there's another one that i think you took down because it was so so mean but there's also the tweets that you would send out against her over the years. And when messages like this are what you send out. The latest thing that set me off on Patreon is a female cosplayer in the magic community crying on her video asking for money. Let's be very clear here. One, if she wasn't a good looking girl, the support would be about 5% of what it really is. And two, if she wasn't also crying, same thing holds true. If I, I said it better in a tweet, but basically 
if you are an average looking woman or any man, you would not have garnered hundreds of patrons overnight. Okay. Uh, serial virtue signaler and crying for Patreon dollars cosplayer. Sia Sprinkle Run posted yesterday. Allow messages to my Facebook page again. Question my life choices immediately. Sprinkle is a pro cosplayer. You know she's a professional cosplayer by the fact that she has to solicit Patreon dollars and then cry in her Patreon video to get loser beta cucks to give her money. But you know what? Fuck these people that think she has any sexual interest in them. Just give her her money. Give her your money. And don't you dare objectify her. Look at, I mean, it is like an all-time white knight gold rush for these losers that think they have any real chance at penetrating this woman. So much burning rage that I recorded a Patreon video crying and begging fucking losers for their money. Oh yeah, you're such a hero. Sprinkle, you're such a hero. And I talked to some people about the cosplay thing. I think cosplay is great. It's it's great. It's not really a service, in my opinion. It's someone who likes to play dress up. I think a lot of people see this fat material, in my opinion. When I start looking at some of this cosplay, I start having to say, like, I feel a little movement down in my pantaloons. And I'm like, I see why. I see why people could like cosplay. But Then do you really think that nothing happens as a result? Do you really think that her inbox doesn't fill up with hate that she doesn't get the same death and rape threats that you are on the receiving end of now. I know when you've made a video about me uh, because I get, it's just my inbox explodes. My phone suddenly rings as you well know how scary that is. And I say, oh, death threat. I guess Jeremy made another video or, or series of tweets about me. Are actions such as this ones that are intentionally whipping your followers up into an aggressive frenzy? Yes, everyone who creates content is going to get harsh attacks, but are you adding fuel to the fire by saying that this war is coming, that we should never give in to anyone being upset and they block you and trying to escape, but that will never stop you from going after them? What exactly is the goal with this? Again, sending out to all of your followers that this pro player is a pedophile because you disagree with him over a children's card game. There is criticism and there is satire. And then there is calling another person a pedophile for tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands to see. Don't you think that for a moment when somebody says these actions are having harmful consequences in the community, a certain level of thought and contemplation about what it is you are doing to people is worthwhile? Ugh. So, like I said, I had my beef with them in the past, but it's to the point that people have almost fucking died in the MTG community by being bullied that harshly. Yes, they have literally died from tweets. Of course they have. I mean, look, everyone who gets mean tweets are just dropping like flies. Look at all the MTG content creators that fell off the face of the planet because somebody said a mean word to them. I was reacting to a crazy statement by a huge member of this community. Loading Ready Runs frontman Graham saying, that women can't deal with comments as mean comments because they don't have penises. And that I was supposed to be ashamed I was born with a penis. And I should be thankful that I have this genital to make me stronger against mean comments on the internet. But that isn't what Graham said at all. That is a misrepresentation of that argument that you had with him. And people who didn't see that argument are going to go by that claim from you. Shouldn't you at least be accurate in, in what you say? 
And the list goes on and on with this. It goes at everyone. When you disagree with someone like Mark Rosewater, do you really feel that the proper response, the proper criticism is to make it so that your thumbnail says that he is a sex predator, so that people, when they search for his name, see that thumbnail, so that people who don't watch your videos or watch the first two minutes of your videos, people who don't understand what satire is, that that is what you are saying of this person. What do you think happens to his inbox after you do that? Do you think that it's not okay to happen to you, but it is okay to happen to him? Publicly shaming these people and posting their names on the internet is, you know, something that's totally fine. But don't you feel that behavior such as taking a photo of just a random person, a woman at a GP, and then sending it out to all of those followers with an arrow pointing at her, mocking her, saying you don't like that she's there, she's obviously there with her boyfriend or just a bystander, to this person you don't even know who she is? What are the ramifications of those actions? Here a person, an individual, makes a tweet, not to you or at you, that just says, what is Antifa? I, I don't know what that is. I don't even know what that is. I don't want to know. But just asking that question and your response is, she's a terrorist. And you literally, to all of your followers, declared her to be such. Do you feel that's a fair thing to send out at another person? Is that criticism or is that an attack? I find it curious that, um, I, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here, but certain, certainly this does read as possibly uh, someone who works for Wizards of the Coast is uh, interested in, at the very minimum, learning more about Antifa. Uh, now, this person happens to be a content creator for Magic the Gathering, Production and graphic design behind the Vintage Super League and the Magic Online Championship. And she's married to a Magic Pro. So sometimes it's not who you know, it's who you blow. And here we have a Wizards of the Coast employee basically saying like, hey, I'm, th I'm considering joining. I mean, she doesn't say like, I'm writing a paper or I'm doing some research. She just asks, hey, can, hey, hey bro. Hey, hey, fellow Melens. Hey, 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 broskies. I'm sure you have the day off from your sh from your shift at the coffee shop, um, and you're not out bashing the fash. So could you like totally totes help a girl out, or uh, and give me some sign up information on the Antifa because I would like totally be down to bash the fash. I, I think that that's extreme. I think that that is sending what you are receiving right now at another. Oh, I see why the comments are disabled. <laughs> of this plane of almond cat right they train their whole lives uh, to become one of the worst i'm not familiar with this person participating in the trials would be i mean the red mohawk tells me everything i need to know but we'll see here proud of you spranks yeah aaron you have a penis and you're one of the most toxic players in magic the gathering just research this guy this is a hundred percent about virtue signaling this is all this is if you want to really get down to the numbers, what does the LGBTQI LMNOP population represent? Less than 1% of Magic players? Word community is a word people use to control other people through social pressure. We get to immediately hate speech. Yes, everybody's favorite catch-all term for words we don't like. Let me just drop a hate fact on here. Every time this baloney about women in magic comes up, it's always presented as women in magic, women in magic, women in magic. There's not enough women in magic. We need more women in magic. Why? Because I, I know when I walk into game stores, they're literally raping women in there. It's like, I, I mean, I'm used to it now. I just walk by and there's rapes happening everywhere. And like, it's, it's normal. It's normal. Right. So hopefully they can stop all the rapes. Jeremy, just being fair here, just being reasonable here. Do you think that when 
someone such as myself, and this is just one example, makes a reply to someone that says, oh, you lost a follower over Nazi punching joke, but you gained a modern follower, seems like you traded up to make an entire video saying I advocate political violence. I received so many comments about Nazis and the Holocaust and my being one and what I'm doing. And, you know, most of my family <laughs> died in concentration camps. And I'm being given a barrage of that because you you saw me make a reply to someone that was saying, ah, looks like you traded up. You got a magic follower who likes modern, which is my favorite format. Is that a fair response and reaction? That that's the image that comes up, that these are the things that you send out. When you laugh with these hundreds of thousands of followers and retweet things like this that they send you, you're encouraging them to keep doing this sort of thing, to send these types of things my way and Wedge's way. And you know, there is a certain truth that if you want to be a content creator or something similar, you need to grow a thick skin. And I know you would probably say, well, you don't care about getting death threats. They don't affect you. You do have that thick skin. You don't care about getting rape threats, and neither should I or Sprankle being attacked in that way by other people after you go after us in a video. But the thing is, not everyone's the same, right? We don't all have the same mental fortitude, and at the very least, having an awareness of the ramifications of our actions when you have such a huge following, I think it's a fair thing that you should consider. I know that the issue of mental health is important to you. It certainly is to me. And you've been brave to publicly say that you struggle with anxiety issues. Well, that right there, that's showing that not everyone is built the same. Yes, it is a struggle we all should fight. We must endure, we must overcome, but that doesn't mean it's as simple as flipping a switch. And when a person with 150,000 YouTube subscribers suddenly decides to call another person a pedophile or a sex offender, say you're really a man and some 3 out of 10 beggar, and on and on and on, well, that does have the potential to have an effect. And obviously it had an effect on Sprankle. Wasn't going to GP Vegas. But now that I know I control Tolarian Community College and Wedge IRL, I'm 100% going. See you, go, see you all there. Bring the popcorn or bring popcorn. Now, all of you know on my main channel <laughs> and who follow my main Twitter account know I'm super sarcastic. Okay, obviously. I know it was all meant as a joke, but when someone such as yourself creates a private Facebook group that you then publicly invite your viewers into, and in it you offer rewards for people attending one of Wedge's panels at GP Vegas where they can ask him humiliating questions about his weight, you just thought it was funny and blowing off some steam with friends, but you were sending this out to all of your followers private Facebook group, which I started for fans, subscribers that were going to meet me and hang out with me in Vegas. And so I po posted, I really need some trolls for the YouTuber Q&A on Thursday. Drinks on me if you have the stones to ask one of my questions. This is an obvious sarcastic joke comment. It's, it's I mean, like, everybody knew this. Um... You didn't know who was in that group, and you yourself seemed to acknowledge that it started to get out of hand. Why was it deleted? I don't even remember, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it was maybe the thread started uh, to get attention. <laughs> uh, the wrong type of attention. Does everyone know it's a joke? That's another fair question, I feel. Does every single person that you're taking in there know it's a joke, and what about the ones that don't? Is there such a thing as too far? Is there such a thing as responsibility? To even a moderate degree, I think these are fair questions. So I'm not even going to ask you to stop anymore, because I know you won't. I know in a few weeks you'll be coming after me again. I know that if Christine Sprankle returns to this community, you will come at her with fury and do everything you can to drive her back out again. All I ask is that you consider the ramifications of your actions and ask yourself what kind of person you want to be. 
is that how you want to shape the world around you? Is that how you want to shape other people's lives? It isn't what I want to do, and it's not what this video is meant to do, and I'll never do another video like this again. I, I'm in, I just want to, I was, this was supposed to be a video on how to be a better control player. Is this the message you want to send out into the world?